the frequency. Another parameter that we need to know for choosing it in the right way is indifferent if we want to go up transducers. 600 watt, 1 kilowatt, single frequency, or we choose chirp transducers from 1, 2, or 3 kilowatts. The rules. The frequency is practically same, but it is. It is very important to know them. Why is that? We could choose the right transducer for what we need. We have already seen in the previous video the importance of installation. Installation must be done must be choice according to our type of boat, of course. Now instead, let's see what frequencies should we choose for the R needs. How many frequencies are on the market? Well, the most important there are definitely two. These are 50 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. Actually, chirp transducers have them. Divided into two segments, but into three. We have the low part, which is the low part frequency, that can be always imagined with 50 kilohertz. The high frequency part that we can imagine about 200 kilohertz. And the middle part, that is a value that is more or less at the center. I respect these two extremes. Why were the frequencies split? Why you don't use a single frequency, maybe with crystals mounted in a certain way? In order to satisfy all the needs of fishermen. Because every frequency has features. In general, let's just say for the physics of acoustic frequencies. If we use low frequencies, we will able to penetrate much more water. So, low frequencies to go very deep, or simply go deep at parity of power energy. High frequencies for more definition. This is due to the length of wave, that is, we are unable to define object. When we hit him with our ultrasonic impulse, for more than the wavelength. This means that at high frequencies, we will have a higher definition of targets. And on low frequencies, a definition less accurate. To explain it better with a graphic example. If we go to see a school of fish with a low frequency, these will be much more grouped into a single red ball. the same school of fish if we go to see it with a high frequency. We may be able to distinguish a lot better targets within the group. However, things have changed in recent 10, 15 years with the advent of the chirp. The chirp works in a completely different system, no longer exploits the frequency, that is, whether it's high or low, for the definition of targets. The chirp works on a principle slightly different. Go to overlay a wave train that is a swap. Starting from a lower frequency. And it comes to a higher frequency. Every single ping is built this way. And through software processing it is able to get a peak from this swap. And this peak is very precise as position. Now I'm showing you some screenshots on my TZT3 with the B265LH probe. How do you see the definition? Definition, pure target. Is not it is absolutely cheesy. Also on the low frequency side, the differences you see are determined from the width of the cone. On the monotonous frequency is very important. The more we rise with frequency, the more we will have high definition. The more we go down with the frequency, the more targets will be. Less defined, less precise. But we will also talk about this a little more come on, because actually when we go to fishing very deep, however it is deep, 
having a very high definition doesn't always pay off. Sometimes it can be helpful to have a little less definition, but still be able to see the target. Rather than having a definition very high, and then it makes us disappear on the size of our screen, the target same. To make it simple, we have to choose a probe. It has at least a low frequency to be able to go deep. Or a probe with an average frequency or high frequency. Or low, if we want to stay in less water deep. Another important thing to know that it's all about frequencies. That frequencies do not all react the same to turbulence to air bubbles. If we have a problem, for example, bubble or turbulence, when with the boat we go gliding, it is much better to set up a frequency high. Have a high frequency because high frequencies, for example, 200 kilohertz, they are much less sensitive to bubbles of air. Of course, if there are really many bubbles, clearly low or high frequency not resolve the problem. The problems exists and cannot resolve only with high frequency. Or rather, it should be solved with installation done better. Ma But if we have small delle bubbles piccole do, bollicine dovute a magari il passaggio di una barca front, davanti a noi perché siamo in scia o comunque nell'acqua ci sono delle piccole bollicine d'aria, l'alta frequenza funziona molto molto very, meglio. Very per questo in America hanno America. fatto anche sonde in alta in frequenza con coni molto larghi. Proprio Just per aiutare gli angler che vanno a fare traino d'altura a riuscire a vedere see. comunque However, anche se sono in acqua, in acque in agitate waters, dove magari le onde producono bollicine e quant'altro. Normalmente il discorso frequenza viene abbinato con il discorso cono di radiazione, cioè il cono del nostro trasduttore. Però sono due cose completamente diverse. È It vero che normalmente tutte le sonde, quando le fai lavorare a una frequenza più alta, il cono è più stretto. Quando su un trasduttore abbiamo due canali con due frequenze diverse, bassa, alta frequenza, per esempio, normalmente il canale della bassa frequenza è sempre con un cono molto più largo rispetto a un canale dell'alta frequenza.